to my life. Right, I am recording now. So um, please all, um, I want this to be as interactive as possible. I have the chat bar open. Um, so if you don't want to unmute yourselves and come into um, the call, then jot something down in the chat and I'll endeavor to ask it, uh, answer it, sorry. If, um, if I don't know the answer, Kaylee will know the answer. I think she's staying on, I'm not sure, but. Hey ho, um, hope everybody is okay. Um, so when we left off in Academy, we started box bobbing or um, the theory behind the bob. So I've done half of it just to not waste um, too much more time. So I'll show you through that in a minute, but we primarily started to talk about um, section and patterns and how a section and pattern can help you out throughout your haircut. So if you will remember when I was saying about what I used to struggle with um, in Academy when I was working towards my um, my first test, second test, third test and into when I was a stylist, I couldn't really get my balance on my shape. So my reasoning for was the whole area behind the ear. So I found that this whole area in here, I used to lose control of that considerably. So I found a nice way to basically work. It was solely to keep my body position where I want it to be. So if your body is straight and your shoulders are straight, you will keep a nice clean line. Evidently your comb is straight, your shoulders stay straight, your knees just bend and you won't start leaning your shoulders down. As soon as you drop your shoulders, you're gonna to start to drop the weight in your line. And it's generally here behind the ear where that happens on both sides. And then you can't ever really realistically get your shape or your stability in your front piece. So we're gonna to touch on that again. And then we're going to go into a bit of a blow drying demo. So that's just gonna be a bit of a recap. Then we're gonna, go for a flat brush blow drying demonstration, which is where we left off on the Wednesday just before Christmas, because a lot of you guys got your round brushes out and started round brushing your shape, which gave you additional length to cut off on your underneath line, or you're looking for your graduation at the very, very end. We were cutting things off or potentially cutting things off that we didn't actually need to remove. Um, and I'll explain the reasons why that happens and I'll show you a way to take your graduation off. What graduation actually looks like, and I don't want to belittle you guys, you know what it is, but there can be certain areas where it's not graduation, it can be your internal shape, and then show you a nice way to take it away. Um, so hopefully it all goes well and is all balanced. Um, but before we begin, I've got written on my piece of magic paper um, uh, that I nicked from the Academy, um, our elevation and our shape work. So elevation and over direction. I will be doing my head sheets as I go, but it's primarily going to be your line work head sheets. So slightly diagonal sections, working up the head and running from back to front as we come up behind the ear or up, come up across the ear. And that is the way we can help ourselves keep control of our shape, okay? So if I spin myself round, and just show you my left hand side that we've done so far. So we have our line sitting just below the hairline. So one thing to be very careful of is looking at your actual hairline and looking at where your hairline grows on your guest. So anything this short, as you'll see, this is, this is quite short as a mannequin. So anything short as this short on a person, we really want to be checking our um, hairline, checking our nape wells, any contraindications that we could possibly have for the guests to stop her or stop you from doing the haircut. So I find, as I've said to you guys a lot in, in salon, um, especially Gracie and Monica when we were doing the cutting beforehand, you are the professional. So if your guest comes in with a photo or a bob that is right up by her hairline, don't go clippering away the hairline too much. You can obviously do your little bit of um, hairline removal with a scissor over comb if you want to, but if you advise to go for something slightly different, she will go for, or, or he will go for it. Because you are the professional, you have done your training for as long as you possibly have done. And you'll still be doing your training when you do come into being qualified stylists. I know obviously um, everybody, you are all level three stylists, so you're still doing your training, but some are on some floor, some are doing more model nights. So you're always going to be learning, but it's why every single session I'm going to always come back to your elevation and your over direction, your shapes and your weights, because your fundamentals are the absolutely key part of cutting hair. So even when we start to look at um, 
asymmetric work in a couple of weeks and start to go for really heavy creative stuff, combining different graduations. It's a case of primarily bringing your square graduation, flat grads, round grads, square grads, all into the same haircut. So your classic work combines, and then you make sure that you um, make sure that you be creative through being classic. If that makes sense. Hang on, Soraya's back in the waiting room. Um, I forgot I was the host. <laughs> uh, Soraya, hopefully you're back. <laughs> so let's get going. So. Um, as we mentioned beforehand, I'm going to come round my right hand side of the guest. And normally I would have the back completed before going into the sides on both, on both sides. So my left hand side and my right hand side. But in the interest of speed, I have done my left side. So it could be a little bit more difficult. But can anybody remember what the bone is called or the two bones are called behind your ears? that correlate in with your shoulder blades. Can anybody remember what they were? Frantically looking back through your notes. <laughs> What'd you say? What'd you say? So the two bones here and here. So you've got your occipital bone and then you've got two bones here that go oh, that no. way in. Is that muscular? I thought I knew the other Yeah, nice try. <laughs> they are your mastoid process. Yeah, absolutely. That's it. So, <laughs> so your mastoid process bones are really important for when you are working a line and doing it in the technique that I run with because they act as the point of your head where most people's head starts to round in completely into the front. So as we were talking about earlier, where we're trying to keep our body straight and trying to keep the body flat, if you're working in between your mastoid process bones and in between your shoulder blades, if your hair is longer, you're going to have a little bit more, less chance of your body starting to lean. So anything in the mastoid process, we cut straight. And then anything past there, which is gonna be little pieces like this, we're gonna leave till later on. And I guarantee you, this gives you perfect balance every single time, okay? So we're gonna have the head slightly forwards and we are going to have a slightly diagonal section. Who remembers why we have a slightly diagonal section? Why is it not dead square? So the shape's more round when yeah. you go more diagonal. You, 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 you can do, absolutely. So you, you're gonna have more length into the front. But yeah, I was... Yeah. <laughs> But if we want it to be a complete box bob, so we want it to be dead, dead square, why would we have a slightly diagonal line, do we think? So then when she lifts up her head, it will be straight. Yeah, perfect, exactly. So if the, the line is dead straight and we've got our head forwards, as soon as she lifts her head up, the front is going to lift, okay? So everyone will do a really lovely, clean, uh, boxy, one-line bob when her head's forwards. I think that's perfect. But as soon as she lifts her head up to walk down the road, that line's going to lift. So you're going to get real heaviness and real sagginess down the base. So then you'll start to say, oh my God, I've gone so short in the front. Now we've got to lift that line in the back or do something internally to take that weight out. Okay. So enough talking, let's get going. So I'm going to come into the back. Hopefully you can see my section. I've got my half that I've done and half that I haven't. And I'm going to try and stand out of the way for this as well so anything past the master of process bone we're going to leave okay so small end of the comb and scissors go in behind the hair and underneath the comb to maintain that little bit of length or maintain control and push back into the guest so you want to keep your hair as, as close to zero degrees as you possibly can which aids for zero elevation Okay, so zero elevation is going to give you an absolutely clean line. You're always going to get a little bit of graduation. It's just impossible not to. But what would happen if we push the head directly down onto the nape, onto the neck? I know a lot of people see people in salon doing that. I used to do that myself. But what's the, what's the um, possible potential issue that we're gonna find if we push it in? Because... If you push it down onto the neck, it's yeah. going in the shape of the of, of the head. Yeah. And then when it straightens out, it'll be like the wrong length or shape. Absolutely. So um, as Melissa says, we nobody's hair sticks to the back of their neck when they're walking down the street. Your hair will fall in a nice little bit of movement. 
So if you're pushing the hair down with a lot of tension onto the back of the neck, the hair's traveling further than it actually needs to go. But as you move up the head, the hair's still traveling further to get in and start to hit that silhouette from the neckline. So you're gonna find that it's a little bit more difficult to get a nice clean line and a nice clean piece of movement, okay? So good, we've got, I'm gonna move back a bit, there's not enough space. <laughs> so we're gonna stand directly in the back of our guest and gently run our line into the front. So my shoulders are flat, everything's nice and smooth and I can get right nicely into my line without dropping my shoulders, okay? And make sure that connects to the other side. And anything past here, so anything past our master process where we see we've got our little piece in here, if I lean round into here to try and cut that little piece off, my shoulder drops. And I'm also trying to move my body around the shape. You'll always be told to stand in one position when you're cutting a bob, which is absolutely true. But it defeats the object if you're gonna start leaning round the shape, you may as well just walk round and cut it, yeah? So you're still going to be compromising your shape and compromising your slight corner into the mastoid process and behind the ear. This whole area behind the ear is such a difficult area to control, which is what we started talking about when we were doing our layering techniques and using our um, triangular shape and round shape to push hair away from any areas. I call them your danger zones. Anything where you've got a, a very difficult area to control or where your density changes drastically from the back into the top and the sides, we've got double the amount of hair in the back than we do over the top of the ear. There's this whole expanse here that we need to control. So that's where our shaping work can come in and help you to push weight into there and push stability. But when we work in a line or our heaviest form of graduation, we still want to be able to control that shape. So by standing and being strict with your body is the perfect way to work it, okay? That's not to say if you do step round, it's wrong. This is just my technique. This is the way I like to work my shape down. It doesn't matter if you come round and you feel you can control that. That's absolutely fine. I personally found it very difficult to control. So again, second section, I'm gonna lower myself down by bending my knees, shoulders stay nice and flat. And we're gonna run our line in and then see if we can get any further from my line without dropping my shoulders at all. Okay, and then double check we're all balanced, which is good. And then we go up again. So next section is gonna hit the top of the ears. And I'm gonna do one more section just in the back. So again, standing in the same position, comb the hair down, keep the hair as close to the back of the guest as you can, control it with your scissors but your comb is the, is the most important tool you have, other than your hands. <laughs> so now we're gonna move up again. So instead of pushing my shape all the way up to my um, crown section, why do we not, why do I not work, or why did we say we didn't work from our radial? Can I remember that? Why did we go from the crown to the top of the ears? Is there any reason we do that? Or is that just something for? aesthetics. Is it because that's like the roundest part of the head, yeah. the crown? Absolutely. Let's, I, I call it the roundest part of the head. Um, it's the most the most area of control. Sorry? Is it the highest point? Uh, that, I'd say that's the highest point, but this is this is your central point. So if you shove a, shove a post through the, the uh, crown, come out the chin, you... cut it in half, you've got the same amount of hair. Yeah. But also okay. this whole area here from your radial to your crown to the point of the ear, that is the most difficult part of the hair to control. If we start on our radial and we work our line, for instance, and all of, all of this piece of hair, we over direct back to the center back. We're traveling further with this piece of hair than we actually need to travel, if that makes sense. So the hair's going to be sitting or that we're going to have the hair sitting or this piece of hair is going to want to come down here into this area that we need to control fully. So why would we pull that back to here when we control it easier here and it helps us with our guide? Yeah. So re working from the crown is the most important part of cutting line work because it can help you move your shape around. And now we want to keep that flow. So my sections are parallel the whole way up to the top of the ear, and now we want them to be parallel all the way into the front. So I don't wanna change the way my section goes 
and then come back up into the right hand side. If I start to do that, I'm going to build more weight behind the ear and I'm going to get a bit of a bit of heavy graduation behind the ear. I'm going to lose control. Okay. So as we were doing a couple of weeks ago, we're going to run our line nicely into the front and then pin that away. But then keeping the head where it is, we're going to come back to the back because there's still going to be more section of head to come through here. So I'm going to turn around a little bit and control my shape, keep my shoulders nice and flat and run my line. And then anything else I come in, I drop my shoulders. So now we're going to change the way we work. So I'm going to come through to the right hand side, lift the head push it across to where I'm standing. And make sure you've got that 90 degree angle between the chin and the chest line. That way, if anything happens that in the salon, so I, I don't know, the lights could start to flicker. She looks up to the ceiling, push her head back down, make sure there's that 90 degrees. If you make sure your body is right and her head is right, your balance will always be perfect. We know now that behind our master process, the balance is fine, but I now need to make sure that the rest of it connects. So the best way to work it, if I, I don't know how you're going to see this really, is comb down, stand in directly into the side of the guest. And you can see that if I make my line parallel with my cutting line, I've got my guide from the back and the hair is falling into where it naturally wants to fall. Okay, so let's try and cut this on camera. My arm's going to be in the way, isn't it? <laughs> All right, let's go around this way. So I'm going to stand a bit away, but I would be in the side, okay? So comb the head down to its natural form. And we want to find the guide and run yourself in, okay? And then similarly into the side pieces. On a mannequin, there's no ear to worry about. So I'm not going to worry too much about my ear sections, but we ran through how to go around the ear last time. Um, who remembers that? I was surprised, I say it every time I did, I was surprised when Kaylee said, oh, I did that. I was like, oh God. <laughs> what was that technique? How do we do it? Because obviously people tap above the ear, yeah? And tapping above the ear is fine if somebody's got reasonably sized ears or reasonably uh, distanced ears from the face. But say, for instance, someone's ears jut out quite considerably, you're going to want to make sure you don't get a hole in the shape. So what technique was it that we used that pretty much worked every single time? Can anyone... You cut the head in half over at the top of the ear. Say that again, sorry. You divide it, you divide it in half, so at the top of the ear, and then you yeah. bring it back. Absolutely. So come into the front. And then very, very light tension, just run that shape back into behind the ear, take your line. And then when you dress that down, the hair will come through and just soften into your shape. And then you just bring that front piece off. Good, nice work. So again, we're gonna run from the back to the front and our, our sections are parallel the whole way through. These are our roadmap to your sections, which is why we I haven't done my head sheet, <laughs> which is not uh, very professional, but, um, Head sheets are your, they are your roadmap, but they help you to see where you're going. So I always say to people in level two, like start combing from the very, very top. If you comb from halfway down, you're gonna change your section or change your actual um, parallelness of your line, if you will. So comb from the very beginning and make sure that your sections are parallel on both sides. And then you can ensure that your work will always, always be balanced. So we've come into the back, then we're gonna lift the head push your head off to the side and again come into the front. Does anybody have any issue with moving their guest's head around? Those of you when you do models or do clients, do you, do you find it's a little bit strange picking her head up and moving it about and then moving it back or are you quite quite comfortable with doing so now? Silence. I guess that means everyone... You've got to move it around whenever you can, so get comfortable yeah. with it. <laughs> yeah. They're there, that's what they're there for. They're there to, to have you... We all know straight away, when you're 16 and you start an apprenticeship, you 
are forced into this period of I'm standing very close to somebody I don't know, I'm touching them and um, I'm washing their hair, for instance. And that's, that was scarier for me. But when you get to a point where you realize I need her head in the correct place, otherwise she's gonna complain, don't worry about it. Just shove her head wherever you need it to go and she will be fine to do so. Um, they won't ever complain. As long as you're, you're gentle with her, um, and polite about the way you're doing it, they're not gonna mind at all. It's never gonna be an issue. So again, we come into the back and make sure we clear up all of our section through here. So again, comb down and run in. And then that's gonna be the lot for the back. So we put the head up again and run our shape into the side. And again, hit the front. And hopefully this is balanced, but we shall see. So have you, do you ever choose to use a flat brush when you're blow drying? Do you guys ever choose to use it or do you always go straight for your round brush? Does anyone ever just go, I'm going to use a flat brush today or is it primarily round brush blow dryers? Or is that what your guests in salon want you to do, like a round brush most of the time? It depends. Yeah, what I, I <laughs> so, so it depends what cut. If I want it, if it was a bob and it looked stupid with a round brush, I'd flat brush it. Yeah. But I'd usually use a round brush. Yeah. Yeah. In mine, it's like they always want you to have that kind of polished finish. Yeah. You kind of get that more with the round brush, I guess, instead of the yeah. flat brush. Okay. Yeah. yeah, that's like me as well. Okay. I always want it to be like rounded at the ends, but if even if, yeah, if even if someone asks for a straight blow dry, they want me to do it with um, a round one to make it look more smooth and really. Whatever. So you put, you can't get a smooth blow dry with a flat brush. You can, but like if if I was to use a flat brush or like maybe a bent brush, I should probably just be like by using it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> to be fair though, when I had my hair in a short bob, I could only flat brush it because it looked really stupid with a round brush. Oh, really? Yeah. So, um, it's easier. Yeah, that's not good. So, we're going to do, um, we're going to do a flat brush today. Now, where I was beforehand, we weren't allowed brown brushes. Um, they were banned from our kit bags, which is strange. So, you'll all see, you'll all see me always get this thing out. Um, and that's my, my brush of choice. Round brushing, I don't really like to use round brushes really. I, I'm never really one for um, the big bouncy voluminous look. I rather have a smooth glossy finish um, with my bob. So that's what we're going to do today. And the reason we're gonna do this, uh, Kaylee uh, brought it up in a couple of weeks ago when we were in the, in the salon last when you were, we were blow drying and a lot of us had our, um, our round brushes out. And there's nothing wrong with using a round brush. I, I have to stress that first. There is nothing wrong with doing so. But there's a better way to work than just reaching for your round brush constantly. Um, the reason for is, as I said earlier, you're gonna start cutting things off afterwards that possibly don't need to be cut off. And you don't want to get to a situation where your guest gets home, blow dries her hair after a couple of days' time, and then um, you find, or she finds that there's little bits and little holes and little things that pop out. These are perfect for getting flat brush blow dries do, done. It's quite, it's called a vest brush. Um, it's, I don't know if you can see it too well, but it's a little bit more comfortable. So when we use, <laughs> when we use our wrap drying technique, which is what we're going to run through today, you're basically stretching the hair around the head using the head as a template to get a nice, clean, smooth, beveled blow dry. Okay. And in Sassoon, we use these all the time. And for getting something quite glossy and quite sleek, it's a very, very nice brush to use. Um, also, what you've got to think of is depending on the width of your round brush. So most of the time, people will come through with like a, a medium sized round brush. Um, but the length of hair under here is incredibly short, yeah? So what you're gonna find is your round brush comes in and then you're pushing that hair up and creating your additional volume 
in a position of the hair where it just can't handle it and it just cannot handle that additional build up when you want the hair to lay nice and flat. So it defeats the object of how we've been cutting the hair and keeping the hair at zero degrees and keeping it as close to the guest's neck as we possibly can. You've trained your lives to be able to cut really cleanly. So then you're gonna come through with your guest and do a big bouncy round brush blow dry where the hair's gonna be sitting kinking all over the place. I find a round brush is really difficult to actually control the roots of the hair. Whereas this is a lot better. Or your vest brush, vent brush, uh, Deadman's, use whatever you wanna use. So the idea with a, with, a, um, with a wrap dry is to solely, as I say, wrap the hair around the head using the head as a template to... <laughs> uh, I'm making a bit of a mess here. Uh, there's not much space. <laughs> um, <laughs> sorry. So I'm gonna wrap the hair around the head using the head as a template to basically stretch the hair out, okay? I personally go for high speed, high heat and I wanna wrap the hair all off to one way, switch hands and wrap it all back the other way. If you find you get somebody's hair that sits down and flicks this way, wrap it this way and it will cancel out your flick, okay? Another little tip that I like is always keep the handle of the brush facing the mirror when you're using a flat brush, okay? The reason for is the hair will always want, I don't think you'll be able to see this, but the hair will naturally want to kick towards where the handle of the brush goes. So if I bring that in, hopefully you can see what I mean. So if I pop in into here, I don't think you can see it, can you? Maybe you can see that, but the handle of the brush or the, the, the hair wants to flick towards the handle. So when you come to styling your hair through, as we all know, the crown sprouts out and grows in a spiral. So you're gonna have one side that sits nicely forwards and one side that sits back off of the face. You want both sides to ping into the front. You'll have all seen editorial photos where they've got a beautiful bob on the jawline or on the cheekbone or down onto the jawline where the hair sits in and pokes forwards. And that really clean line that comes through. You've got to work your blow dry in a sense to get that shape sitting forwards on both sides. And also, if you're charging X amount of money, you're going to want somebody to pay the money. So show off what you've done. I know my cut's going to be pretty good, but why do a, a, a standard blow dry when you can do something perfect and get them actually seeing your work? Okay, so I'm going to put the head forwards and we're going to go. So um, I, you probably won't hear me talking. Uh, I doubt I'll hear you talking. So uh, give it a go, uh, give it a shout. <laughs> but I'm gonna blow dry and then we're gonna do our graduation afterwards, okay? <laughs> so, we're gonna come in from the base and airflow always running down the hair shaft as well. As we know from level two, first couple of weeks of styling training, um, your hair, your shaft is like a Christmas tree. You've got your cuticles coming away. So you want to blast that hair down. A lot of stylists also follow the brush round with the dryer and they look like they're doing a lot more work than they actually are. So they're, they're chasing around with it. Personally, I think that's a little bit um, unnecessary. Um, just have your dryer nice and high, keep it moving and just allow your airflow to move around. The so, let's go. So all off to one side. Also you notice my dryer is always high. If my dryer comes down low, I may as well use a round brush because I'm pushing air into the bottom, pushing air particles into the base of the hair. So always have my dryer nice and high so we're pushing the hair down around the head. And come in. And then I'm going to switch and come back around the other way. So again, keep the dryer moving and just wrap the hair around. It's also a really nice way of working if you do have a little bit of a dumpy nape. You can control that nape really easily, drop that shape in and have this really nice look when you throw it in the mirror. It's always been quite a nice thing to get the wow factor in the look. And then again, run back the other way. And 
and then we can just gently run the end into your brush and get that nice piece of So into your end. And a lower end down a little bit as well. So, that, so, I can see it's higher. so again, coming all the way up the back, wrapping across. So, jumpy crowns can be a problem, but if your fly is up and you're wrapping across each side of your crown area, you're going to flatten that down. It's a lot of the time with cowlick, you can cancel a cowlick out. If you're just working that wrap dry across the top of your cowlick, you can create something very, very flat indeed. So growth patterns can be changed, but they're always going to come back when you're getting what to their head. So that's why another way you want to try and stay away from doing certain things. That's a broken stand. So again, into the front. You can hear my voice, but not the dryer. That's weird. Uh, I know that's. Oh, <laughs> sorry. I thought it was a question. <laughs> All right, let's go. Okay, now into the side. Run your staple forward. So I've never really run for blow drying in a parting. I don't really like the way the parting falls when it's been cut in the shape of the parting. If you can wrap dry across your part and cancel that out, you get your natural bit of volume that the guy the guest is looking for with a flat line. You only really want volume in this top four few sections of the hair. So with your wrap dry, you can in, in a sense still build yourself a little bit of volume, but the hair stays nice and smooth and nice and clean with every single piece of hair sitting exactly where you want it to be. So not because it's not great thing that you can't build any volume with a flat must be found with your wet dry. Again, nice and clean. And then just pick up your last piece of hand here. And then your wet dry. So again. So you can see, even with the wrap dry, without me actually doing anything else to the hair, you get that nice, smooth, natural bevel to the look. The core even starting coming in with the irons, the starting coming over the top of it to smooth it through. You get the natural bounce and the natural body from the hair already. And then it's just cleaning up your work and cleaning the line through.
Spin it round. So now again, coming to the other side. Won't take too much longer. Very hot in here. <laughs> We're going to come back and wrap the other side. So we switch hands, and now I want the dry or the handle of the brush facing forward with. Everybody still awake? <laughs> Nearly done. <laughs> oh, that's not the right. Oh. And again, into the front. Don't worry about putting hair in their face either. I never do. Never too much of an issue, really. Oh,
quite last bit, then we're done. Okay. I think she's got the heating on downstairs. <laughs> Bloody hell. Right. Uh, oh, uh, that was you. <laughs> yeah, some don't mind it in their face. Um, some don't like it, some don't mind it. Personally, um, we didn't have a choice. If we were building volume, I would dry everyone's hair in their face because you can find a way to set the hair forwards and then once it's set, dress it back off the face. Um, some people won't like it, obviously. So you do have to get the, um, you have to get the right guest to shove it all in her face. But personally, I put the hair in the face to check balance, which sits quite nicely. Um, and now we're just going to have a little look at um, how to remove any external graduation or any outline graduation from your look. Okay, so I'm going to position it before I show you. Um, I mean, you. Two Go seconds. On. I just, while you were doing that, I said into the group chat to like give you some feedback on like um, how you were doing the um, blow dry using your um, flat brush and um, like don't put the hair in the face and stuff like that. Um, but Michaela, you put the client will expect sank amazing, so you avoid putting the hair in the face. When you blow dry the hair going forward, yep. what you're doing, like any work that you do is amazing. So don't think like, I don't know, just that one, like just because you're blow drying in the hair in the face or away from the face, either one is always going to be amazing. Do you know what I mean? So I don't want you to feel like, oh, if I do it that way, it has to be, woohoo. If you come backwards, it, it will always look amazing, like your work. So don't put yourself down, missus. Absolutely. Um, I, I completely agree. I, it's not, I, I have a mindset of, it's not how you get there. It's what it looks like when you're there, if that makes sense. You, it's like trying to tell somebody who wants a, a Victoria Beckham Bob that they can't have a Victoria Beckham Bob. You're not just going to say she can't have it. You're going to give her an example as to why. And then you're going to give her a reason as to what we can do for something that looks a little bit better. I find when somebody's got their hair in their face, if it's in their face for a little bit of time, it's not an issue. It really isn't because they're going to see what you've created afterwards and they're going to love it. So it's a little bit of, I mean, when you get your eyelashes done, you don't mind when they put that stuff on your eye, do you? And they, and they I don't know what they use, but they put something on your eyelids, didn't they? So you don't mind too much. So you're not going to mind. And everybody, go on, bro. No, my sister does eyelashes. That's the only reason I know. <laughs> <laughs> so now we're going to do our graduation. Okay. So if we check our line once she's up, it looks it looks reasonable, but it's not clean enough. Okay. So how we're going to correct our shape now is just push our heads ever so slightly forward, and you're going to see that there will be a bit of graduation on your work every single time. So if I pull her forwards, you'll be able to see mine. Um, it's just that tiny, apart from that bit, <laughs> it's just that tiny little piece under here. So you can see where my line flows and then you can see my slight piece of graduation in the base, okay? But I know that in my blow dry, if I split up my blow dry, you'll see that every single piece of my blow dry is nice and smooth, okay? 
So there's no kinks and there's no bumps or anything at the root area. It's, diff it's different on a mannequin. You don't really get too much bumps in the mannequin. But if this piece of hair under here, for instance, came and kicked into here, and then another piece sat over the top of it, there's a chance you're going to think that piece over the top is graduation. So start whopping it out. And then when you come up and realize that it actually isn't, you're in big trouble, okay? Also, I see a lot of the time, or I saw a lot of the time when people would put the head right forwards and then cut off any form of graduation in there. The issue you're gonna find with that is you're pushing the head forwards. As we know from the theory work we've been doing over the last couple of weeks, that your scalp is where your hair grows out of. So if your head pushes forwards, you're lifting the hair up so you're gonna expose more of that underlying first section if you push the head right down so the chin's touching the chest, okay? Uh, I've also realized that my eyesight is not good enough to cut hair without glasses. So uh, I keep pushing my glasses out, so just bear with me on that as well. So we're gonna push the head forwards, but ever so slightly, okay? Never push it all the way down because they're not gonna walk down the road like that, okay? They're gonna have their head up. Some people put their head down a little bit. Um, but they're not gonna have it up massively. And then all we want to do is just clean off any graduation or any areas that do pop through. So I don't, can you see that? Or my, I, I don't know if you can really see it. You can see it, can't you? Give me a thumbs up if you can see what you I'm talking about. You can see it, but if you can, can you bring it a little bit closer? You can see I've it. A, I've got, a, I've I got think... a thing now, I'm gonna take her off of here. Cause I've got a, I've got a lamp down there. So. Things we try and do. Yeah, yeah. that's better. So I've got my line, which is if I put a red up, it looks okay, yeah? But when we push her slightly forwards, it's just this rung here, all through here, is what we need to start to counter and start to correct, okay? So if the, and if the head goes right forwards, you see all of this under there, but then you're gonna start cutting that away and you don't really wanna take that off, okay? So make sure she's on. And when you're doing outlines, so if you're doing, uh, when we do graduated bobs, you'll see I like to do sharp, strong outlines. Keep the head upright at all times. Uh, you, everyone, as loads of people will say to you, put the head forwards. But if you put the head forwards, you stretch out your skin of your nape, and then you'll do this beautiful outline. You'll lift the head and it'll all change. So if you're doing outlines, keep the head upright, okay? If you're doing a line and clear enough graduation, put the head back to where you cut it. Yeah, so we put the head forward slightly, so put the head back forwards, okay? And then we're gonna come through just with the points of our scissors. So come down or bend your knees down, or bend your knees so you go down. Support your scissors with your finger and with the points of your scissors at a slight diagonal angle, just run your line in to the very, very front and just remove any of that graduation that forms underneath your guest. So you can see how much cleaner that looks in there to the to the right hand side already. Yeah. And any little dusty bits I take off personally. And then if I come around here, again, oh God. <laughs> it's working from home last. It's, just, <laughs> it's not good enough. <laughs> so again, we're gonna come down and start to point our line out. This for some people is the worst part of the haircut. It will start to get to be the best part of the haircut for you. It is really, my head's in the way, isn't it? <laughs> it is a really nice way of working. And it's also something that I found, or as I say to you all the time, I am a bit over the top when I'm in salon or when I'm doing clients. You've got to show people in the salon and show other clients that are getting their hair done what you're doing, okay? So utilize the chair. The chair spins for a reason. So spin it round. Look in other people's mirrors while you're doing this. If you know your work is good enough, then show everybody else in the room. And when you're bending down and doing your um, outline work, make sure people are watching what you're doing. So again, in here, comb the hair through. Nicely, and there's not much graduation in here, but I'm gonna just clean it off anyway. So it sits quite well. And then where she was a face. <laughs> and then this side, <laughs> we're gonna see what we have this side too. 
So there's a little bit in here. So run our line, make sure it's sitting into where we want it to go. And again, you can just, just see under here, there's a tiny piece in there. So we'll come through again. And run the line. Okay, so oh, I've got a really, a really stiff stand I've brought home. So now, when you come to style your work through, make sure that you get your work looking as good as you can. Now, if you want to be really, really strict on yourself, and I advise to be really strict on yourself. Um, and if you're ever doing shoot work, show work, where you've done a bob and you think that's perfect, do this. So get your mirror, okay? And pop your mirror underneath your mannequin. And I'm gonna try and show you this now, but this is gonna be quite difficult to do. So you can see your former graduation underneath your line if you, I don't know if you'll be able to see it. No, Rob, we can just see your head through it. <laughs> oh, no, I'll leave that for now. <laughs> see that um, when we get to the academy. But if you put if you put your mirror underneath it, then you can see your work. So um, yeah, <laughs> rather than seeing me, uh, we'll leave it for now. <laughs> so that is my basic way of working a, a box bob. Um, I can promise you every single time that if you do work this sort of technique, you will be able to find yourself keeping your balance 100% of the time. The only way I ever found that I lost my balance is when I lost control of my body, okay? Keep your body nice and smooth, don't, well, nice and flat. Don't work past your mastoid process bones if you don't want to. Save them for when you come on the side because that's where the hair is gonna fall. We always tend to over-direct these parts of hair back into the center back or back too far than they need to go. Leave them where they want to fall and cut them where they want to go. Make sense? And just to show you guys, my bob is, um, yeah, excellent. Um, I will hand you back to Kaylee. <laughs> um, and I'll stop the recording too. <laughs> I'm going to stop the recording, Kaylee, yeah? Yeah, please. All right. Please.